about uh, a, a perennial topic, uh, Japanese education. Um, and we're going to be focusing, I think, particularly on the end of high school and the transition from high school to university. Um, and there have been some major changes uh, announced by the government uh, earlier this year. And our speaker this evening is Professor Takashi Otani. Um, he's the director of the Centre for Secondary to Higher Education Transitions at Nagoya University. Uh, so he is exactly an expert uh, in this particular subject. Um, I think he's, among international systems, he's particularly familiar with Canada, actually, rather than the UK, having done quite a lot of his research um, in Toronto. Um, but he has published a number of books in both Japanese uh, and in English. So, uh, on that note, I'll pass over to Professor Ogani. Thank you very much for introducing me. So, first of all, I show my deep gratitude to Mr. Jason James, who kindly and generously arranged this talk for us. And also I thank Professor Masaki Nakamura, who introduced me to Mr. Jason James, Director General of this institute. Um, I uh, feel so honored to be here, to have an opportunity to, to talk to you at this a prestigious foundation which has been contributing to Anglo-Japanese cultural understanding and exchange. And also, as far as I know, there are only two speakers here from my university, and the other was our former president, Dr. Hamaguchi. And he talked about Japan's higher education reform, uh, mainly emphasizing on our universities and ever. And I'm now from now talking about secondary to higher education connection. So I think we too can kind of create one uh, context. And uh, uh, to be very honest, I'm kind of a uh, little bit excited about this talk because this is Baker Street. And when I was a grade of five student, we had a kind of uh, explosion of population because that was after the World War. And uh, we could not have enough number of classrooms. So our classrooms were placed in a special classroom of like a science room, and a school library room. And then mine was fortunately and unfortunately was a library room. I took series of books from the shelf and put it into my desk in the classroom. And I was reading the books and hiding them just behind <laughs> the textbook. And then I was so much concentrated on reading the book, so I didn't notice my classroom teacher came up to me and he, or she, no, no, she took the book and then she hit my head with the <laughs> corner of the book and she took the books away. But that's no problem because I have a lot more books. <laughs> <laughs> and that books are Sherlock Holmes. So when I was a grade five student, I couldn't, didn't even imagine that I had an, would have an opportunity to talk on Baker Street. <laughs> <laughs> so life is so much uh, beautiful, I think. So let's get it started. Today I talk about high school and university articulation reforms. So I put only some Japanese here. So how many Japanese language speakers? Okay. The na not native. The na natives. Are you a native? <laughs> okay. So anyway, sometimes uh, in some places I will say some Japanese words. And uh, Japan 2020. What is coming to Japan in 2020? <coughs> Olympic and the Paralympic Games. Yes, you're right. What else? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so remember this. And as for me, um, as I was introduced, I'm a professor of Graduate School of Education and Human Development at the university. And I also, although it is also uh, explained by Mr. James, I was 
serving as concurrently as the principal of affiliated upper and lower schools of the university, that's junior high and senior high. So in the case of a Japanese university, the principal of affiliated schools are elected from among the full professor in terms of the noble personality. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> And I served the concurrent as as director of the Center for Secondary to Higher Education Transition. This word is exactly the same as um, high, high schools, university articulation in Japanese. And this is the website of our Center for Higher Education Transition. The topics of today, uh, first one is overview of high school, University articulation reforms and the present situation of high school education in Japan. That's why we need these reforms. Can I say these reforms? <laughs> well, I was wondering while I was making this slide <laughs> all through the night last night. <laughs> and what should be oh, what should be considered? And this is the background of uh, this reform, these reforms. And the first uh, trigger, kind of trigger, was four years ago, uh, 2012, August, Central Council for Education, that is in Japanese, Chiu Kyoshin, Chiu Kyoshin Ikai, uh, published uh, this report on qualitative transition of university education to build a future. Quality assurance of high school education, improvement of entrance selection of universities, entrance selection of universities, and university education reforms. And just one month later, they established a special section for high school and university articulation within this Central Council for Education. <coughs> and next year, uh, this is the uh, um, council uh, outside of Ministry of Education. This is uh, within the other uh, cabinet. Cabinet Council uh, published the fourth proposal on connection of high school education and university education and entrance selection of university. And the next year, special section for high school and university articulation in the Central Council for Education. This uh, section. Uh, made the final report. In December, this Chu Kyoshin, Central Council for Education, published this, um, announced this report on integrated reforms in high school and university education and university entrance, entrance examination aimed at realizing a high school and university articulation system appropriate for a new era. And this was just the end of the year, but, and this, is just, this was just the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. But the Ministry of Education published the plan for implementing high school and university articulation reforms. And in March of this year, uh, Ministry of Education, Culture, Science, Sports and Technology, <laughs> right? and established a uh, Council for Implementing High School University Articulation Reforms. That Dr. Hamaguchi, our former president, is one of the members of this council. And uh, September, this council published the uh, interim report. And uh, in March, because Japanese fiscal year begins in April and ends in March, so this is the end of the fiscal year, just the very end of this fiscal year. This council announced the final report. And just a week ago, can you see this? Can you see this? <laughs> uh, the ministry published a report on progress of a high school university articulation reforms. So this reform is backed up or supported by these kind of various types of um, Council report. And so, what are high school and university articulation reforms? Th this is an uh, unified reforms. And we sometimes say um, kind of uh, 
triadic for a Trinity car. And I, I, I just did my internet search, if I can say Trinity car. I could find only 280 expressions of the Trinity car. I'm Catholic, so I'm accustomed with Trinity. But I don't know why Japanese people like the expression Trinity or Trinity car. Anyway, this is sometimes said the Trinity car reforms of high school education reforms and university education reforms and university entrance selection, so admission reforms. And this is said the most revolutionary and comprehensive education reforms since the Second World War. So the first the high school education reforms. So this uh, promote a proactive and a cooperative study that focuses on problem identification and resolution, problem finding and solving, and improve the qualitative abilities of high school educational staff to be swiftly implemented. <laughs> and evaluate uh, multifaceted scholastic activities and learning outcomes, revise progress report and guidance report forms. Um, university, some universities are taking this kind of report into account when they decide the entrance. In Nagu University, it is just um, put in uh, storage. Nobody is reading this. But the uh, said this uh, should be utilized a lot more and revise curriculum guidelines. And uh, also they uh, attempt a complete evaluation of the national curriculum guideline. This means present high school education is not problem solving and problem finding type. Premise, problem or question is always given, and we just solve that in a written form. And also, this means present high school education is mono faced. And concretely speaking, there should be more in high schools like these kind of education, learning based on the individual intellectual interest, active learning, cooperative learning activities, problem solving learning activities, self-expressive -express presentation activities, beyond the subject matters as contents, beyond the boundary of the school. So that means the social activities and the variety of activities, they evaluate and they assess and they encourage the students to do this, like an in international baccalaureate. And the university education reforms. Bold implementation of a qualitative transition or qualitative change. Promote understanding and evaluating of students' learning outcomes. The promote entrance to university for non-first year students. Uh, institutional reform, this is institutional reform as part of fiscal year 2015. 2015 is last year. <laughs> and the university entrance selection reform, this is a big, big one. And this is uh, categorized into two phases. The first one is reformers. to individual university selection criteria and processes. Presently, university is just looking at the academic achievement, written paper exams, academic achievement. And that they encourage us to reform that. And also, the ministry implement two new national tests. So I talk about this first. So reforms to individual university selection criteria and processes. Um, ministry encourage us to evaluate the scholastic abilities, including intellectual, decision making, and self-expression. And these are uh, defined in the fundamental law of education in Japan. That was revised in 2006. Then they put this. 
So this is said um, three elements of academic skills in Japan. This is kind of one. Um, I'm skeptical about that because this is not an element. I, I believe these are the three aspects of academic skills. The, because academic skills cannot be break, broken down to the elements. But anyway, this is now, everybody knows this, and this reforms is said this should be uh, based on this idea, this structure. And evaluate at the high, high level scholastic ability that include being proactive, students are proactive or not, multifaceted or not, cooperative or not. Because university didn't see this kind of aspect with students when they decided the entrance. Oh, I was forgetting about this. <laughs> <laughs> and selection of people that excel in a specialized field. So even if one student have a, a very has, is developed in a special field like a, a radio communication or fishery or cooking or uh, uh, neuroscience or uh, uh, theoretical uh, physics, but this is these things are not taken into account when the university decides the entrance. And the second one, implementation of two new national tests. The first one is the fundamental high school scholastic abilities test. This is from this career. 2019. This is the first nationwide test to assess the results of high school education. It is quite strange that Japan has not had this kind of uh, assessment test of high school education. Uh, some uh, researchers are, have been criticized about that. What we had was only the uh, so-called the center, the center test. I will explain about that. And the second test is the prospective university entrance scholastic abilities evaluation test. These are uh, uh, tentative uh, name. But anyway, this should be wrong from 2020. So this is the year of Olympic year. And this is, of course, the jurisdiction of the Minister of Education. And sport is also the jurisdiction of I think they are so busy. <laughs> <laughs> and redevelopment and restructuring, redevelopment and restructuring of the National Center Test for University Admissions which has continued over 41 years, practically. There was a, it started as a different name, but then it changed into this name. But on the whole, uh, until by this year, it's continued 41 years. Now it's 38 years, 37 years. years. Practically un unchanged. Um, yes. And this is a, uh, action plan. So these are Japanese here, so you can add and understand, maybe. So there are so many charts by And this has four more years, <coughs> because this is the new one, and this includes the revision of national curriculum. And uh, this is only the first uh, test but this includes the second test, which should be revised again. So schedule is, so they start the fundamental high school scholastic at this test in 2019. And 2020, the prospective university entrance scholastic ability is evaluation test. And this includes the descriptive test, because everything is now mark sheet, multiple choice and speaking skills of English. So now, uh, 
this thing was a listening test. Mm -hmm. But from this year, mystery says they include speaking. How do you think speaking test can be done individually? Listening can be done through the headset, mm -hmm. but speaking, how can you mention? There is uh, lots of ways, and I, I, my background is educational technology, so I, I have a lot of information about the technical aspect of this test, but the, today I am not saying about that. But anyway, one idea is each student speaks to his or her own smartphone, <laughs> and it is uh, sent to the center. And, uh, 2024, the new version of the Prospective Universe and Transcorticality version, this test, uh, should be started based on the new curriculum guidelines, national curriculum guidelines. And this may include CBT, computer based test, and ILT, item response theory. First, the ministry wanted to in implement the CBT and ILT from this year. And so that they can uh, have a multiple opportunity for students. If we use CBT and IOT, uh, we can have a multiple um, opportunity. And there's even a, a cunning has, is nonsense for this because everybody takes the different questions, problems. The problems are uh, selected by the computer and given to the uh, applicants. And uh, I'm not talking a lot about this today. And the reason why the set of reform is called the most revolutionary and comprehensive education reforms since the Second World War is, um, I say this is the development of the National Center Test for University Admission. This is Daiokunyoshi Center Scan in Japanese, and it is included in the reforms. It will have enormous impact on Japan's education. <laughs> <laughs> and that is because this national test has had a great impact on high school education so far. And the current situation of a high school education Problematic situation. Present goal of high school education is mostly success in university entrance exam. High schools are ranked based on the number of entrants of a highly ranked universities. And a fairly distorted education has been done for both university bound students and non university bound students in the high school ranking game. And as a result, it produced unwilling university entrants, or entrants, and aimless university entrants, or entrants, and a high school education only focused on university entrance exam. And the National Center Test for University Admissions so has continued practically unchanged since 1979, as I told before. And just the English listening test was implemented in 2006. And over 560,000, am I right? Mm -hmm. Okay, 560,000 university bounded G12, graduate 12 students, and the high school graduates take it every year. This high school graduates are the people who failed the year before and challenged again. This huge number is taking the same exam at the same time, on the same day, only once a year. This is Japan's center test. One of the biggest social infrastructure <coughs> in education. The details of that test is all multiple choice that I show you, mark sheet answers. And students bring the program sheet, program booklet, back home with notes recordings of their answers that they marked on the mark sheet. And the 
center uh, publicly announced the correct answers after the exam. So students mark their own answers based on the announced the correct answers, and they calculate the point. The students decide the final choices of the applications to universities, considering the result. The, each applicant's result is automatically comp computed and sent to the university that the student chose. The university combines the result of this test and the result of the individual entrance exam, individual test for entrance selection. But there are some universities which admit the applicant only seeing the result of this test. So this is a center test. But mostly done in universities, but the some are done in some sites or in high schools. Uh, enough distance. <laughs> and this is a booklet. Science, science, mathematics, mathematics, uh, language, international language, and civic study, and geography, I think. And these are the questions, just a brown, fill the brown, selecting from the multiple choice, and then they just mark the sheet. So this is a device for listening this. And, uh, 520,000 of students are taking this listening test. This is produced by Panasonic and Sony. <laughs> they are doing this. And how the result of the test can have crucial and determinative impact on one's choice of university. How do you think, imagine, uh, the student can decide based on only by the Mark over there. Um, there's a secret. And the entrance <laughs> examination industry is quite developed in Japan. So there are several nation widely operated mega type of cram school. Mega. And uh, students inform major cram school, me mega jukus, of their mark spontaneously. And their choice of universities to which they are applying. And it becomes a huge sample of data. For example, Kawai Juku is one of the biggest mega Juku. And actually, Kawai Juku, I'm living in a 31 stories high um, condominium. And it, my condominium is just next to Kawai Juku's head, headquarter building. And anyway, Kawai Juku collects data from 430,000 out of 560,000. So this is a quite huge sample. And the Juku uh, compared the possibility of pass or fail level based on the point of the, the center test. And students decide the choices based on that kind of information. And this is recommended the choice of universities which an applicant apply, take individual exams, taking hmm, take individual exams. So this is called a diamond application. <laughs> so uh, students uh, apply for uh, two to three universities, or two to three schools of universities. These are ad adequate ones. And they also apply for a challenging level of schools, one to two. And also they apply for uh, a little bit more easier ones for their safety net. So. If they apply, for, then they apply mostly uh, four to seven, and if we do not have our uh, apply application center like your country, so we students have to do that by their own. They send the application via service mail or uh, electronically on the website now. And it has shaped the high school education. Thus, the result of this test practically determines which university a student should apply and can enter. 
and high school education has been shaped so that the students can be successful in this test. And the test shaped high school education and the quality of university entrance over a period of 41 years. And before and after the center test age in academic schools, before they started that center test, uh, each university prepared examination questions by themselves. And there are actually sometimes very difficult ones, too difficult ones, or irrelevant, even irrelevant ones. But anyway, academic skills of high applicability and flexibility were needed for the applicants. This is somewhat more academic. But after the center test prevailed, we had the big center test, the center prepares the examination questions and relevant questions from relevant areas are produced, created, then question answering skills are needed rather than applicability and flexibility. And a road memorization and recall of information are important there. And repeated exercises become most effective. After the center test age in the instructions to students, the teachers, therefore high school teachers say to their students, do not think, just memorize. <laughs> Do not think what to do in the university before you get in it. Think that after you get in the university. And testimonies by students of Nagoya universities. This was written in my uh, classes, reaction papers. I was educated to memorize lots of sets of uh, questions and an answer, pair of questions and answer, for three years of high school. High school teachers always said to us, do not think, just memorize. And high school teachers always said to us, think what to do in university only after you get in the university. As a result, <laughs> <laughs> true scholarly ability has not been cultivated or recognized. Uh, this is our memorizing set. So you can mark uh, in a color pen and you can just um, hide it using this plastic seat. An unexpected uh, effect is uh, there is another uh, serious unexpected effect. Before the center test, there wasn't any scale with which the difficulty of all <coughs> kinds of schools of universities are measured. Uh, this is very complicated and I don't know you understand what I mean. So, and before, so there are ranks only within each specialty. Before, within school of laws, first school of law is this university, and the second is this university, and third is this university. And the school of education, this is the first, this is the second, this is the third. So this was not uh, kind of close, a uh, close the specialty. But after, the center test. We have a scale which is applicable all kinds of schools of all the universities. So first one is school of law of this university and the second one is school of economics of this university. And the third one is school of law of <laughs> so of this university. Like things is often said and recognized. Then what do you think? happens. High schools are thrown into a severe competition. It's a preposition. Pre yeah. And the university entrance is, that is measured by the number of students, as I told you before, who got in more difficult schools. So high school teachers push their students to get in, not based on the student's academic interest but based on the rank of the applying schools. They push the student in the most highly ranked school of our university, that is, the student can pass regardless the student's interest. For example, even if this student has a wish to learn about the law, getting in this university, but if this teacher see this student can pass a little bit more difficult universities, School of Economy, 
then this, the teacher push the student in that university, that school. So purpose, purposeless and unwilling entrance and entrance. And high schools exploit their students. I, my understanding is high school exploit the students to raise the rank of the school. And about high school teachers deceive themselves that it would be better not for the school, but for the students' future. I believe so. I think they deceive themselves. And but <laughs> this kind of, for the, this, this kind of situation, there are compilation with criticism from various strata to such a, oh, okay. Okay. Right. some example from former high school teachers from universities, from societies, just an example. At assembly of high school principals. When I was a high school principal, I attended an assembly of high school principals. And uh, there was a um, former high school teacher who was invited to the university and uh, presently teaching at the university. And uh, the words by, by him is, I have been teaching at school, high schools, and uh, after the in retirement, I was invited to a university to teach students there. And, but I have deeply noticed just one thing there at the universities. That is, what I have devoted myself entirely in my life to at high schools was totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the words from deep and shocking awareness that the academic skills to get in the university doesn't work as the academic skill in the university when they learn at the university. And this sounded to me as if it were his very honest and most brave confession. And he also gave warning in a modest way from his regret, deep regret. And this is a former president of a Kyoto University. Uh, Kyoto has four of Nobel Marie. And now it has five of them. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and he wrote here this point, very small. And we never more should not accept such narrow minded student. He wrote Samoshi Gakusen. Samoshi is a very bad word. <laughs> so that means that, that university has been accepting private students who are not interested in art or music at all, even if his or her academic level is high. And also this is from society, industry. Uh, how many participants know Tadao Ando, who is a very famous architect, world famous architect and architect, yes. and Professor Emeritus of the University of Tokyo. He was a professor of the uh, University of Tokyo. And this is uh, one of his works, of, uh, Modern Art Museum of Fort Worth, Dallas, you say. And this is also on his work. Pietrino di Palazzo Rassi, Venice, Italy. Maybe this is a little theater of, I don't know, <laughs> Venice, anyway. And very interesting is that he is just a high school graduate. He has no university degree, but he became a professor of the University of Tokyo, most prestigious one. And he has a, a very interesting uh, policy to educate the new employees of his big office, architecture office. And uh, he said every year he hires three graduates from the Department of Architecture of University of Tokyo. And he let the newcomers plant their own trees in uh, the office, the uh, land property of the office. And uh, he let them take care of the trees by themselves. One day, it was very, it was a heavy rain day. He was late for the heavy rain, and he drove to the <coughs> his office, 
and he found the three newcomers were walking, carrying the buckets with full of water and having an umbrella. And he asked them, what are you doing? And they said, oh, Mr. Ando, we are going to our trees to watering, for watering. And another story is a small Japanese woman. He also let the new employees uh, wrestle in a small, small thing. And he said, what he said was very interesting. If there are three new employees, one is okay. One can wrestle. But the second one is uh, very much resistant about that. But finally, the second one wrestles. But the third one never wrestles. He or she cannot touch the other's body, and he cannot be touched by others. So he says they are not human beings. They are ETs. <laughs> the graduate of the University of Tokyo, the most prestigious one, is just the ETs. So I think this can be said because he is a high school graduate. So if he is a graduate of the uh, University of Tokyo, he can ask, couldn't say that, I guess. <laughs> For example, from Toyota Motor Company, so a graduate of master's program of School of Engineering of Nagoya University, become a chief of a small division within a couple of years. I heard that. But there is a problem. He or she cannot reprimand the employees who is working under him supervision. So the Toyota Motor Company, Toyota Motor Company is in the same prefecture as Nagoya University. And then the CEO is a graduate of our university. And the Toyota Motor Company donated a big auditorium named Toyota Auditorium. So the company has an expectation that the university, our university, let them acquire basic human social skills. And not only this fundamental social skills training is now expected to universities as the last school before they go out to the real society. But it is, is that what the university has to do? And also, I'm really pessimistic about that because the professors uh, do not possess with enough social skills. <laughs> <laughs> like me. And isn't it done before the university and social, huh? And? and? Socially, I don't know, or extracurricular activities and after the uh, secondary education or home. These are background for the reforms. And we may be able to have a big expectation that can solve the present problems. But, however, some fundamental issues which are missing. There are some fundamental issues which are missing. Some fundamental issues are missing from my own viewpoint. High schools where the education is traditionally high school university articulation oriented. So like our affiliated high schools, they foster uh, the transition type of connection type of academic skills. And uh, although there's a relatively small number, but we have to evaluate and share such educational transition, tran tradition and practices. And uh, how can we discuss about the background and conditions of it? So there's no um, utterance to that point in the uh, report. And three academic skills that I showed before, the intellect, intellectual and sexual expression and uh, problem finding or something. And it can easily fall into techniques without appropriate school culture that support such education. But the report is not saying anything about it, culture. The school culture is very important for this kind of education. And how do we predict the ripple effect on junior high school and primary school? The, the center exam even presently, 
has a big ripple effect onto the junior high and also the primary schools, elementary schools. So the reformers also have a good, great impact, but nobody is uh, seeing about that. And how can we get out of the educational policy which puts too much emphasis on the viewpoint that sees students as mumper, globalized mumper, industrial mumpers. The danger that mumper oriented education at university as a last stage of school may comes down to secondary school. I don't think secondary school is not the place where mumper is built. But university, it is okay in university because it, it, that is the last stage of education. But if we do the higher education, high school education, university education collection, this can be coming down to the secondary education. And it may distort the secondary education, I'm afraid. And no comprehensive reflection on education so far. There's no comprehensive reflection on education so far. How do we recognize the programs of education so far? A ministry official made a presentation about the high school aided university articulation reformers in February. I do not say who was that person and where was the phrase. What was the date? And his last words were very uh, impressive. He said, the society where the girl train which run at the speed of 285 kilometers come to station every five minutes was only made through our education so far. There are some uh, trains which runs faster than Japanese vector like a TGV, TGV runs at the speed of 300 kilometers, but it doesn't come every five minutes. <laughs> but this actually comes every five minutes. And one day when I was looking at the uh, uh, flight, and uh, the interval was only four minutes, and every four minutes. And uh, he said, therefore, Japan's education software was not wrong at all. However, the mumper upon which the knowledge-based and globalized 21st century society cannot be trained through only such education so far. So uh, it, it was right, but it wouldn't work very well from now. So that's why the high school and university articles and reformers are inevitable and necessary. That's what he said. This was so much interesting <coughs> to me. And uh, his discussion on the education so far is probably uh, has a wide aspect. And as a ministry official, he couldn't say that the education so far had serious problems. And he might have felt it is also part of his responsibility that letting the Japanese people have a sense of pride on our society and education. But the biggest, the bigger the reform would be, the deeper the reflection should be, is my idea. So this is a table of cause of deaths of male Japanese. So this is the first cause of death. This is the second cause of this. This is the age group. From 15 to 19, the first cause of this is accident. And the second cause is something. Uh, from 20 to 44, the first cause of this is same, something. And from 45 to 49, the first uh, cause is malignant neoplasm. This is a kind of cancer. This is, this is a, a comprehensive name, cancer. But the second cause is still this one. What do you think this is? Yes, you're right. Suicide. And the Japan suicide ratio is here. This is North Korea, South Korea. This is England. I show my deep respect to your society. This is England. This is a cultivated society. This is a society with um, uh, civilization, I think, I believe. And 
what are, what is our society? So for what kind of future society do we reform our education? It's a problem, important. Do we hope to have the society where the suicide ratio is half of today, although the billet rain may come every <laughs> time, <laughs> and do we reform the education reform for that? Or do we hope to have the society where the suicide ratio is a quarter of today, although the billet rain may come every 20 minutes? And do we reform the education reform? Do we perform the education reform for that? Or do we hope to have the society where the period rain still come every five minutes, but the suicide ratio is much less than today? So, you know, nothing's clear with the reforms. So the schools, students, and parents have so deep anxiety with that, while the industrial stratum has, this should be has, big expectation with reforms. So the future of the reform is unknowable. That the future is unknowable, that the past should give us hope. Thank you very much.